Okay, let's settle down. Okay, today we're going to have our tutorial, which basically, the moment I open my mouth, what are you supposed to do? Okay, so um, the uh, time spent in tutorial is actually going to be the first part of Teach Pack, so I would strongly suggest you join the tutorial. Uh, for those of you whose friends were not here, let them come and join us here. Anyway, in the study of anatomy, we talked about definitions of terms, right? So it's also important that as you study for this class, you have to understand what you read by knowing the definitions of terms, right? So when I say anatomy, exactly what does it mean? The study of internal body Okay, so study of what? Okay. Okay. Keyword is structures. Which part of the human body will internal, external, it doesn't matter. The important thing is structure. What about physiology on the other hand would be what? Okay. Physiology is dealing with what? Functions of body structure. Function. Okay. A very good example of these would be what? The heart, for example, right? The heart is found in the chest or thoracic cavity. It's right behind the sternum. And what is the function of the heart? It is a what? Pump. Pump. It's a muscular pump. And what does it pump? Blood. blood. And what is the blood containing? Oxygen. Oxygen. Because it has to be pumped all throughout the body, all throughout the cells. Every single cell in your body needs what? Oxygen. 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 Because if there is no oxygen, the cell will? Die. And you will? Die. And you will rest in Peace. six feet under the ground, under permanent resident at forest, lawn, lawn cemetery, right? <laughs> so that is not what we want to happen, right? So apparently, there is a what? The heart and the lungs work together. The exchange of gases occurs in the lung, right? When we inhale, we bring in what? Oxygen. Oxygen. Blood, air that contains oxygen. When we exhale, we get rid of what? Carbon Which is found in the air, right? And we get rid of the carbon dioxide. Who uses the carbon dioxide? Yes. The plants. Because they need that for photosynthesis, right? Yes. And what do the plants produce in return? Oxygen. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> we give them oxygen, we give them carbon dioxide, and in turn they gave us back what? Oxygen. Oxygen. So are we going to kill all these trees and plants? No. It's, that's just trying, this is killing yourself, right? Because you know for a fact that the trees and the plants are responsible for the production of O2 or oxygen, which we need, right? So we need to preserve the trees, we need to preserve the plants, right? We know that for a fact, right? So organ, lung, exchange of gases, get rid of carbon dioxide, why? Because it is waste. But in fact, it's not really waste because it's going to be utilized by the plants and trees for the formation or production of oxygen, right? On the other hand, they produce the oxygen that we need and good thing that eh? we have oxygen from the plants, right? Now, so when we say physiology, we cannot dissociate that from fun structure because what use of the structure be if there is no function that it has? Lung exchange of gases, heart muscular pump, pump blood, right? Now, we talked about, therefore, the, the different uh, the hierarchical organization of the human body, right? You and I, you know for a fact, that we're made up of what? The basic unit of cells. life, cells. Cells, cells, right? But before the cells, cells are made up of what? Chemicals. Chemicals, right? Okay. So chemicals, such as what? Carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. and oxygen. This is the most of the elements that we see in the human body, right? In the study of chemistry, we need to understand that you and I are the same, regardless of the color of our skin. I have beautiful brown exotic skin you don't have, right? <laughs> Mr. Garcia, what kind of skin? You're Caucasian, right? Yes. So you're, who is more at risk of uh, skin cancer? This guy here or me? Okay, you, okay, good luck, my friend, okay? <laughs> good luck, okay? So that's life, you, know, you cannot have everything in life, right? Yeah. I have beautiful brown exotic skin, I'm not at risk, but will I still develop cancer of the skin? Yeah. 
Yeah, because I still have skin. <laughs> okay, so, now, as we said, in terms of chemicals, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, we know for a fact, too, that 66% of our body is made up of what? Water. Body weight is water, right? 66.6% is made of water, right? Particularly in your weight. In other words, if the weight of the patient is 100 pounds, how many pounds of that will be water? 66. Of course, what else would it be? If the patient is 200 pounds, what will be the weight be? 132 pounds, right? Isn't it amazing? We can tell, okay? Now, I am 200 pounds, so how much of my, my body is water? 132 pounds, right? Now, how many of you have suffered from diarrhea? Okay. If you don't raise your hand, you're not human, by the way, okay? You better raise your hand, okay? So when I have diarrhea, I lose a lot of what? Water. Water in the stool. So if I lose water in the stool, will that affect my weight? Yes. yes. Amazing. So we tell the nurses to monitor what? Weight, urinary what? Output, fluid intake of patients, because we know for a fact that 66% of that body is water. Is water life therefore? Yes. yes. You can survive without water? No. Maybe, maybe three days, four days? Yes. Food, maybe a week, 10 days, but water? No way. <laughs> now where do you find most of this water? Inside the cell or outside the cell? Inside. Who needs the water? The cell. The cell. Oh my God, this is such a smart class. You know the answers to my questions. <laughs> oh! No wonder you already know the questions and the answers to my questions. I like this class. But this, that shows me that you watch. What did you watch? How many of you watched the YouTube videos I made? Okay, how many of you did not? It's okay, be honest. It's okay. It's free. Because next term, I'm gonna charge you one dollar per minute of viewing. No, I'm just joking, of course. Now, in other words, what we're trying to say therefore is that who needs the water in the cell? So most of this uh, water is inside the cell. It's called intracellular fluid compartment. What does intracellular mean? Inside. Inside. What does extracellular mean? Outside. OMG, right? Extracellular fluid versus intracellular fluid compartment. Now. What other elements are found? Carbon. So whenever we say organic chemistry, you think of carbon, right? Carbon. Whenever we say oxygen, that's O, right? O2. Two atoms making up one molecule of oxygen, oxygen molecule. Now why do we need oxygen? Does anybody know why we need oxygen? Yes? Why do we need oxygen? They say we, without oxygen, the cell will die, right? Why? What is the need for oxygen in the body? Have you ever had? Yes! Is it uh, make ATP? You're the man. What's your name? David. Huh? David. David. Yeah. Okay, where do you produce ATP, David? And isn't that the powerhouse of the cell? Yes. When you say powerhouse, you produce energy in the form of? ATP. And what is ATP? He's the man again. Okay, in order to produce ATP, do you need oxygen? How many of you have taken chemistry in the past in high school? It's called oxidative phosphorylation, right? And this occurs in the mitochondria, right? You probably remember the Krebs cycle or the cyclic acid cycle. You've talked about that, we're in. The food we eat, remember the food we eat? Proteins, carbohydrates, and fats are broken down by digestion and they go into the Krebs cycle or citric acid cycle which become the raw material for ATP, but at the same time, to make it very effective, you need oxygen, right? To produce ATP, more ATP, you need oxygen, plus, of course, the nutrients we eat. That's why the reason why we need to eat. We need to get the sources of what? Proteins, carbohydrates, and fats, because these are going to be converted into what? ATP, which is ne needed by what? Who? The cell. For the whatever function it has to do, right? Okay. Does anybody know the definition of the word metabolism? The rate that you yes? The rate that you burn. 
The red that you burn, okay? Can you be more specific? The red that your body uses. Yes! The sum of the chemical reactions in the body. Where did you get all this information, my, <laughs> my friend David? Or don't tell me YouTube again? I don't know. No, okay. <laughs> He's absolutely right. Sum of all the chemical reactions. It's okay. If you think that you don't know the answer, ask this guy, okay? <laughs> Only for those questions that he answered, right? But I don't know about the others. Well, let's find out in the quiz today, right? So, and he's absolutely right. If you don't know this definition of the mask, it's okay, don't be afraid, nothing to fear. It's only three, five mistakes out of 30, 25 out of 30, not bad, right? The sum of all the chemical reaction that takes place within the cell. In other words, do, are there chemical reactions taking place within the cell? Mm -hmm. Yes, because we're all made of what? Chemicals, right? There has to be chemical reactions within the cell. Now, there are two types of metabolism. One would be what? Anabolism. Okay, who said anabolism? There you go. What's the other one? Catabolism. Very good. What's your name? Eduardo. Eduardo, so we have David and Eduardo. Eduardo, what is that will be responsible for building, producing substances? Anabolism. Very good, Eduardo. And what is that that you break down? Catabolism. Eduardo? Catabolism. Very good, catabolism. So the key word for anabolism is to build, to produce. The key word for catabolism is break down. Are they both under met metabolism? Yes. And how did we define metabolism? It is the sum of all the? It oh. takes place where? Inside. Inside the cell. What is metabolism again? Sum of all the chemical reactions. Okay. What is metabolism again? What is metabolism again? Repetition is the mother of all what? And who said that again? You did. I did. Okay. Not Albert Einstein, but me. Okay. Then believe me. Next term you go to physiology. Then the following term you go to me for pathophysiology. I will ask the same question. How many of you do you think will remember that? I hope everyone, right? <laughs> I hope. Statistical data analysis, unfortunately, would say not everyone remembers, right? So it's like, we have a tendency to forget and to remember things. But metabolism is the sum of all the chemical reaction that takes place within the cell. Now, there are other chemicals that you see here. Nitrogen, you have hydrogen, H2O, hydrogen and oxygen, right? Okay. Then we also talk about iodine. Where do you find iodine? Salt. It's found in the salt, but yes, who put, who put the iodine in the salt? Huh? Humans, right. Why do we need iodine in our body? Yes? Thyroid function. Thyroid gland. What does the thyroid gland secrete? It's an endocrine gland, yes? It secretes hormones. Okay, what's the name of the hormone? Thyroid hormones, right? Isn't that amazing? But do you know the name of these hormones they produce? They produce what? T3 T4. and T4. T3 stands for tri, means three, iodo. Why is this called iodo? OMG, I love this class. Thyronine. And what is T4? Thyroxine. Right? So do you need iodine to produce these hormones? Yes? Yes. yes? And where do you produce the thyroid hormone, what gland? And where is the thyroid gland? Yes, anyone, yes? And what is this? The neck, right? <laughs> In front of the neck. <laughs> it has two lobes, the left and the right, joined by what we call the isthmus. I-S-T-H-M-U-S. This gland called thyroid gland produces the thyroid hormone. And what is this hormone for? Do you know? Okay, of course metabolism. Is this hormone therefore important for metabolism? Yes. Yes. Every time you think of these two hormones, think of metabolism, where does it occur? Every single cell needs the hormone. It's not just thyroid gland. 
The thyroid gland produces the hormone, and who will use that hormone? Every single cell. There's a reason why a patient with low levels of thyroid hormones, will they become a giant or a dwarf when they're children? Okay, if you have low levels of thyroid hormones, will that affect your bone? Are there cells in your bones? Yes. What happens to the metabolism in the bone cells? High or low? low. Fast or slow? slow? Slow. So when the slow metabolism in the bone cells, what happens to the child or infant? Will it be a giant or a dwarf? What happens to his brain cells? If he has low levels of thyroid hormones, will he be a smart genius or will he be mentally retarded. He will be mentally retarded. In fact, when you're low levels of these hormones, you call that what? Cretinism. Can anybody tell me what is the definition of the word cretinism by googling in your cell phone? Go ahead. I'll give you 30 seconds. One, two, three. Let's find out how fast your fingers are. What is cretinism? If somebody tells you, you are a cretin, you tell that person, same to you, thank you. A monster. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes? A characteristic, I'm um, sorry, a condition characterized by physical deformity and learning disability um, that is caused by, let's see, congenital thyroid, thyroid deficiency. Okay, in other words, deficiency of the thyroid hormone, right? Yeah. What am I trying to show here, class, is that whatever we do, whatever we see in our patient, it is always going back to anatomy and physiology and chemistry, right? Yes. Now, what is the natural source of iodine, by the way? Sea natural source, what? Seafood. Seafood, very good. Seafood, right? Fish, crabs. How many of you eat seafoods and crabs? Are they expensive? Yes. yes. Well, it depends when you get them, like you go to um, San Pedro or something, like, you know, I haven't been there though. Now, how many of you go fishing? Me, I don't, so you get free seafood, right? How do you pay when you go fishing out there? I don't know. You have to pay something? Okay. The point is, why did they put the iodine in the salt? Because these people live where? No. Away from the sea. Who mandated to put iodine in the salt? The World Health Organization. Why did they decide to do that? Because for those people who live in the mountains, like 50, 100 years ago, what happens to your thyroid gland if you lack iodine in your diet? In the large, it's called what? Goiter. Goiter, Goiter right? Do, do you understand glass? Yeah. So they decided to put what? Iodine. In the salt. Because you can always buy iodine salt, Ralph's, Albertsons. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. so I don't have to go to the sea to catch those fish because I can just get the iodine from where? <laughs> from the salt. <laughs> because the salt contains? Iodine. Who placed the salt in the iodine? Humans. Is that man-made, therefore? Yes. Is that a natural source? No. no. Is it man-made? Yes. yes. Where do you get the natural source? Pacific, Pacific Ocean. Do you understand? Yes. Pacific Ocean. Okay? So, therefore, as you can clearly see, chemicals. We're all made of chemicals. Where do you find your calcium? Bones. 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 When a patient has osteoporosis, the bones are brittle, can they easily break? Yes. Yes. Do we give calcium supplements to these patients? Yes. yes. Why? Because you need calcium to be able to what? Make the bones stronger. Do you understand? Yes. yes. Calcium is therefore important, right? Yes. What about muscles when they contract? Do they need calcium? Yes. Yes, they do. When muscles contract. Okay? Now, after chemicals, you have what? Cells. After cells, what do you called a group of cells. OMG, I like this class already. And what do you call when this tissues group together, they form what? OMG. And when these organs group together, what do they form? Organ systems. And then when these organ systems work together as one whole, you have what? Organism. The what? Organism. The human body as a whole, the organism, right? Okay, so that means we're made up of different organ systems, right? And I presume you have memorized all those organ systems, right? Right? So we're made up of cells, tissues, organs, 
and organ systems. Now, what is it the term used to describe when you study cells? The psychology. psychology. What is it called when you study tissues? Psychology. Is there such a thing as organology? No, I'm just joking. There is not, right? So there are four. The study of tissues is what? Histology. Okay. The study of cells is what? Cytology. Cytology. What about the study of a group of cells is what? Histology. Still, is, I like this class. This is really a smart class. Because the definition of tissues is a group of? Cells. cells. So therefore, the study of a group of cells is? Histology. And what is the study of his tissues? Yes. Histology. Histology, again. Right? Okay? So, as you can see here, we need to understand what is it in the cell. What are the important components of your cell that are important? I'm just looking. How many of you were able to print out your study guide, right? Yeah. If you can answer and read and research everything study guide, I guarantee you 90% in the quiz today. 90? 200%, of course. It's always good to strive for the moon, you know, or, or even the sun, if you can, if you don't burn, okay? Okay? So we talk about psychology, histology, and of course, um, it's important therefore that when, when we look at this in terms of the, uh, so that's number seven, we'll go to the cell later on. Let's just go over these. When we say gross anatomy versus microscopic anatomy, what's the difference between the two? See with what? Naked eye. Why, why is it called naked eye? Is it the eye really naked? Contact. They would say naked, they're naked buddha, right? Without basic glasses. Okay. Well, with glasses or not, it's still a naked eye without my, the magnifying lens, right? On the other hand, if the structures are very, very small and cannot be seen by the naked eye, then you need a microscope, right? And in order, and we had this for our first session of the lab last week, right? We use a microscope to be able to visualize what? The different types of cells and tissues, right? Did you enjoy your time to watch all those cells, right? Tissues, right? Yes. Were you able to see a red blood cell? Mm -hmm. yes. A white blood cell like neutrophils? Yes. Lymphocytes and all those other cells. The, of course, the muscle tissues, right? Made up of cells. Skeletal muscles, smooth muscle, okay? So the, the, the important thing is that what cannot be seen with the naked eye, you use a microscope. It's called microscopic anatomy, right? And like us in UCLA with our medical students, we dissect human cadavers, we call it gross anatomy, right? Human anatomy, we they say cadavers, right? Now the word surface, what is the key word in surface anatomy? Yes, my dear. Surface anatomy. Yes, the superficial tissue. Surface anatomy is, what's the key word that you want to associate with the word surface? Superficial. 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 What do you mean by superficial? Explain. It's the relationship between like the superficial structures to the tissue. Such as, give me an example. Like the chest to the heart. Mm -hmm. Or the the abdomen, the abdominal wall, to the... Yes, okay, heart, okay, anybody else? Superficial, surface anatomy. Your skin. Skin, okay. Are we talking about anatomical landmarks here? For example, if I say where is the kneecap, okay, and you can palpate, you can see it palpate, elbow is here, right? The deltoid muscle is here, right, okay? If I tell the nurse, palpate the deltoid muscle, surface. Superficial structures, muscles, right? Bones, kneecap, right? Okay. And what about, okay, we already talked about, what about if it's a specific area of the body that we're studying, it's called what? Regional. Regional, like for example, the head and neck regions, the thoracic region, the pelvic regions, right? Because every region has their own specific organs. For example, in the thoracic region, you have your what? Chest region, you have your heart, your lungs, thymus gland, right? You have the esophagus there. And then, of course, when you say systemic, it deals with what? Specific All organs. the organ systems we're dealing with, right? Okay. Let's mention some of them. Which among the organ systems is important in providing protection against bacterial organisms? Yeah. Integumentary system, right? The integumentary system is made up of the skin plus the accessory structures of the skin, like your nails, your hair, right? Okay. And the glands, such as your oil gland and your sweat glands, right? Okay? 
Now, essentially, therefore, we need to understand how these definitions are important to us and how we're going to be able to explain them. What about developmental anatomy as a form of what exactly would that mean? Changes. Changes. Okay, so remember, remember these when you were a baby? How did you become a baby? You started with an egg, remember this? The fundus, the body, and this is what? The lopian tube, this is the cervix, this is the vagina here. Okay. And where did the egg come from? From the ovaries? 14 days after the first day of menstrual period, your mother ovulated. And the fimbri of the fallopian, and the egg went here, and the egg was lying down with the bikini and say, hey, Mr. Perm, I'm waiting for you over here. I'm here in the fallopian tube. Okay, when your mom and dad did something, you know what that means, right? And when your father reached his point of no return, what is that called? What? Before the ejaculation. Climax, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Orgasm. <laughs> the sperm was released from the testes or the male gonad of the father, and then during penile penetration, the sperm traveled where? In the vagina or the birth canal. And you know the sperm do not have any what? Feet that they can run where they do what? <laughs> they have a tail or a flagellum that they use. <laughs> Hey, where is Miss, 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 Miss Egg? Where is she? Where is she? Oh, in the fallopian tube. Okay. Millions of them, but only one will penetrate the egg. All right? Yes. So when the sperm penetrated the egg, the egg was fertilized. And you now have a fertilized egg that decided to travel into the wall of the endometrium, of the uterine wall, and then implanted there, right? Okay. So that is how you started. Okay. You all started with the sperm and egg, and basically that is what happened, right? Okay. Now, Therefore, let's develop mental. Once the egg fer is fertilized, and the sperm is developed into what? Embryo. An embryo, and then a different, <laughs> after nine months, you have a baby, and then what happens on the ninth month? <laughs> You're delivered. And I showed this last time, I think, right? Yes. The mother is in the lithotomy position, the stirrups are there, the vagina is here, the vagina is up here, push, 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 push. <laughs> <laughs> wow, thank you, mommy. What kind of presentation was that? Was that cephalic or cephalic? Cephalic. Because cephalic means what? Head. head. So did the head come up first? Yes. Very good. How many of you were born by C-section? Like, let's form our own club. I was also born by C-section. <laughs> <laughs> did I tell you how it was how it happened last time? Yes, you were traumatized. I was traumatized. Up to now, I'm still traumatized. I'm seeing a psychiatrist up to now. <sighs> My aunt was the one responsible for this criminal act. No, I'm just kidding, of course. She already died. She was, she was the one who sent me to medical school and she was the one who brought me here into this world of misery, you know? <laughs> no, I'm just joking. Of course, C-section. And thank her for bringing me to this world. And not only that, and even spending for my pre-med and medical school program because she was working as a doctor in the East Coast in Philadelphia, okay? So when you're dealing with anatomy, therefore, you're dealing with what is comparative anatomy? In your book, it's what? Comparison between what? Different forms of animals, animals right? Animals. Comparative. Well, some with vertebrae, some without vertebrae, right? Mm -hmm. Some have mump, like when you say invertebrates, vertebrates, class mammals, we compare ourselves with chickens and pigs and everything. It's just comparative. When I was in pre-med, it took comparative anatomy. We were trying to study the cat. How many of you have dissected the cat? How many of you have dissected the frog? How many of you have dissected the shark? Okay, how many of you have dissected humans? Very good, where did you dissect? Oh, this was in uh, Folsom Lake College. Where is this? Up north. Up north, anatomy. okay. Was it, what program was that then? It was anatomy. Oh, you really had to, okay. Yeah. Was it dissected by you or it was really prosected? When you say prosected, somebody dissected it for you. You just went to see no, the structure. Oh, you, you actually dissected. Oh, good, good. Who else? Okay, where did you dissect? GCC. Huh? Glendale Community. You actually dissected cadavers there? Uh, it was donated from the UCSD Med School. Oh, UCSD Med School. Okay, anybody else? Are where? Are we going to dissect one here? Huh? Are we going to dissect one here? 
No, unfortunately, the, the pig is ready for you. <laughs> unfortunately, human cadavers, we cannot afford to have one. You dissected cadavers too? Yeah. Where? UC Davis. UC Davis. What program was this? Anatomy. Yeah. Anatomy. Wow, okay, good, good, good. So, again, uh, we, we, it's important to know these things. Now, clinical anatomy, that, that's my specialty. When you practice medicine and nursing, you have to be good in clinical anatomy. Now, because I practiced before I migrated here in 2002, I practiced for 12 years. I saw a lot of patients. I delivered a lot of babies during my internship as a medical student, right? So when a patient comes to the emergency room and he goes like this, what does it tell me? Why? Why do you say appendicitis, Mr. Garzo? Why? The lower quadrant. Right lower quadrant. What is found in the right lower quadrant? Appendix. 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 Can it become inflamed? Yes. And when it's inflamed, itis means inflamed, appendix is inflamed, can there be right lower quadrant pain? Yes. And what is the danger of appendicitis? It can burst. It can burst. And where is the appendix attached to? The intestine. The cecum, the first part of the large intestine. What happens if that appendix will burst? What is inside the cecum? Oh. Huh? What is found inside the cecum, which is part of the large intestine? Bile. No. It's called S-H-I-T. Oh. What is S-H-I-T? Stool. <laughs> Waste. Feces. Does it contain bacteria? Yes. Yes. So can you imagine if that appendix becomes ruptured? What happens to all the stool and the bacteria spread all throughout the body inside the abdominal cavity? Will you develop peritonitis? So what used to be right lower quadrant pain becomes what? Sepsis. Generalized abdominal pain with war board-like rigidity, abdo rigidity of the abdominal wall. Will this come out in the nursing board exam? Yes. Do you expect my nurses to be able to recognize a ruptured appendix? Yes. yes. Are we gonna send home these patients? No. no. Yes, if you want them to die. <laughs> yes, if you want to lose your license, which you do not have yet. <laughs> Does that therefore need that students like you should be very smart in anatomy yes. and should get an A in this class? Yes. Yes. If you know your anatomy and you get an A, what will be your grade in physiology? A. And what will be your grade in pathophysiology? A. And what happens to the nursing board exam? A. Oh my gosh! Simple remedy. Hmm? Recipe for success. Just make sure you get the best grade that you can get in this class. Now, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna, of course, I'm just trying to push you, but if you can get an A minus or B, that's fine. But don't be happy with a 73% because that is not fine. You'll be struggling all throughout, I'm telling you now. I'm just like a concerned father to you, all my children. And I want all of you to do your best. And if you need help, of course, you can always offer help, right? Okay, now let's move on, okay. so. When we're dealing here for, as we said, if anybody is watching over us there, or I'm, I'm waiting for somebody, I'm just trying to kill the time, right? Nobody's there yet? No. Okay, good. We talked about uh, surgical anatomy. Surgery, right? How many of you are applying to work in the operating room? Of course, very good. That's where the money is, right? Because when you are an OR nurse, what are the chances that you will be laid off? Zero percent, right? Zero. Unless you did something crazy, right? <laughs> what about if you work in the intensive care unit? Of course. Mm -hmm. What about if you're just passing out medicines? I can easily lay you up because you're, you're, you're useless. <laughs> what I'm saying is there's so many people that can take over your jobs. <laughs> but when you're an OR nurse, I see your nurse, what happens? You, you have skills that nobody ever has, right? So think about it, right? Work in the OR and then marry a surgeon. And after one year, get replaced by another lady who's younger than you. Oh. I'm just joking. <laughs> Is it not a reality? Is that on t television? <laughs> Is it one great anatomy? Uh, I should be a director then, huh? Most of my classmates, either they marry their classmates in med school or a nurse. Or in my case, my wife is a microbiologist, but we met in the hospital, that's where love is in the air. Okay? Now, radiographic anatomy, what exactly is that? Okay, I have a patient who fell from 10 feet high. He had a fracture of the left femur. Am I going to do a chest, uh, an x-ray of the, the femur? Of course, I should, right? 
I want to know what kind of fractures are we dealing with, right? Chest x-rays for rib fractures or pneumonia. It's called radiographic anatomy. And what about cross-sectional anatomy? Let's talk. We do CT scan, MRI scan. In fact, I teach a class in MRI technology at Orange, City of Orange in CNI College. We, do, we study the different scans of the brain, scans of the heart, the lungs, okay, of the knee. When you have sports medicine, you want to know if there's something wrong with what? ACL, or you know what's ACL? Yes. Anterior cruciate ligament injuries among athletes. Why would a scan be helpful? Because scans, like MRI scans, can show you the what? The soft tissue injuries. An ordinary x-ray will only see your bone problems, like a fracture perhaps, right? But with regards to soft tissue injuries, like a ligament injury, you need those scans, which is why it's called cross-sectional, right? Do you understand, class? Yes. What exactly do you mean by the anatomical position? Yes? Position? Yes, tell me. Anatomical position, my dear. Is it supine or standing? Oh, standing. Is it standing or standing? Standing. Oh, is it standing or standing? Standing. Standing. Uh, standing in the erect posture like this with the arms where? Hands facing forward. On the side with the palm facing what? Forward or anteriorly. The feet together like this. Okay. And then like this, right? Stand erect. Arms on the side with the palm facing forward or anteriorly, right? That's very important because this is lateral, this is medial. Yes. Lateral and medial in relation to the what, midline, right? Yes. Okay, so that's why it's always important. Now when you let your patient lie down on a bed facing up like this, what is that position called? Behind. On the other hand, the reverse position where you are, it's prone, right? You were able to see this in the anatomy X, right? Yes. Supine and prone, we did the yes. Some of the things that we do, right? Okay. And we talked about a oh, landmark, I already mentioned some of them. Like if I say, where is your sternum? Sternal notch. Okay, everybody touch your sternal notch. The letter U there in front on top of your sternum, right? Sternal notch. Okay, everybody palpate your clavicle. How many clavicles do we have? Two. One on the left and one on the right, right? Clavicle, right? The clavicle is also known as the collar one. Collar. Oh my god, why do you think it's called collarbone? Is here you have the collar in the area where the clavicle is found, right? <laughs> what is called the breastbone? Sternum. The sternum. Why? Because there is where? Breast. How many breasts do I have? Two. Left and? Breast. Do I have a nipple? Yes. Do I have an areola? Yes. Can I develop breast cancer? Yes. I could, right? Now why, why is it that, of course, women have more developed breasts because there is a lot of what? What is the tissue found there mostly? Adipose, Adipose right? Adipose, what's another name for adipose? The simple term? Fat. Or fat, right? Nobody yet? No. Nobody yet, okay. <laughs> I have a feeling he forgot, okay. <laughs> it's okay. Do you understand class, right? Yes. Okay, now, regions, okay? We talked about head and neck, we talked about cervical. Oh, I'm sorry, our regions of the body with regards to, in terms of regions of the body, like head and neck, cervical spine, but in terms of the abdominal cavity, uh, of the abdominal wall, you have what? How many quadrants do we have? Four. Right upper, right lower. So you draw a uh, vertical line and horizontal line passing through the navel. Right upper quadrant. What are the usual organs that you find here? Liver. 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 Gallbladder. So if you have gallstones, where would the pain be? Right upper quadrant. If you have hepatitis, where will the pain be? Right upper quadrant. Appendicitis, right lower quadrant. What about if you have splenomegaly? Left upper quadrant, very good, right? Do you understand class, okay? Okay, directions, first. Terms such as, what is anterior? Front, what is posterior? Superior, inferior, okay. medial, near the midline. What is lateral? Away from the midline, right? So for example, in the elbow, medial epicondyle of the humerus, what is this called? Lateral epicondyle of the humerus. This is my midline here. Medial condyle of the femur, lateral condyle, which means farther away, right? What about proximal versus distal? What's the difference? Proximal means near the center part of the body. What is distal? Oh, so the elbow is more proximal compared to the hand. On the other hand, the hand is more distal compared to what? The elbow, the elbow right? Okay. Now, when it regards to planes, what is a plane? It is a, 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 a plane that divides the body into a left and right mid 
Side. Equal left and equal right. What about if it's left and right here? Power side. Same thing here, right? Left and right. So when we do scatter, we can do the same thing. What about the plane that divides the body into anterior and posterior? Or coronal, or coronal plane. What about superior and inferior? Transfer. Superior and inferior. Transfer. Superior and inferior. It can happen here, it can here, here. That's why we do the CT scan, MRI scan. Sometimes we use the word actual scans using the transverse, or what's another name for transverse plane? Horizontal. Horizontal plane, right? Very good. Okay, now, body cavities, the thoracic cavity is here. Yes. The abdominal cavity yes. is part of what we call what? Ventral, yes. right? Ventral. And the pelvic cavity over here. What about the dorsal cavity? Do you have you what? Cranial. 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 What else? Spinal cavity, which contains what? What does the spinal cavity contain? Spine. The spinal cord, okay? And you know that um, the spinal cavity is inside the spinal, the spinal column or the spine, right? Now, bear in mind, therefore, in the cranial cavity, what is found in the cranial cavity? The brain. The brain, right? So, so the dorsal cavity, the ventral cavity, in the pelvic cavity, what do you find? <laughs> pelvic organs, such as the uterus, the fallopian tube, the ovaries, the bladder. So when the patient comes to the emergency room with bladder infection, think of what? Cystitis. What is cystitis? Bladder infection. Urinary bladder infection, which is a form of urinary tract infection. Cystitis. C-Y-S-T-I-T-I-S. Right? You understand, Glass? Yes. Okay, now, I will talk about levels of organization from chemicals, the cells, tissues, organs, organ systems, and of course you have your body as a whole. And we talked about that already, right? Now with regards to cell structures, the outermost part of a cell is called what? The plasma membrane. The cell membrane, the plasma membrane, and it protects the cell, right? Okay. In the cell, there is what we call, what we call the control center of the cell. Nucleus. Nucleus. It has its nuclear membrane, nucleoplasm, and between the nucleus and the cell membrane is your cytoplasm, right? What do you call the fluid portion of the cytoplasm? Cytosol, very good, cytosol, right? C-Y-T-O-S-O-L. In here you have different organelles, either membranous or non-membranous. Let's deal first with the membranous. What is it that we said powerhouse of the cell again, class? What is it where it could either be rough or smooth? Okay, very good. If it's rough, what does it produce? Ribosomes. It produces ribosomes? Ribosomes. It contains ribosome, right? But it produces what? Proteins. Because ribosomes are important for protein production. On the other hand, we say smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Do you have ribosomes? No. no, you don't. Therefore, because there are no ribosomes for protein synthesis, what do the smooth endoplasmic reticulum do? Lipids, carbohydrates, exactly. Synthesis, right? Synthesis production, right? Okay? And of course, when you say control center of the cell, it's the nucleus because the nucleus is where you find your what? Your chromosomes and your DNA, right? Okay? Now, when it comes to uh, the difference between passive versus active transport, what's the difference between the two? Active transport requires what? ATP. ATP, very good. What about passive transport? No. It's not require ATP. Passive transport is movement of substances from an area of what? High a high concentration to? Low. to low. Passing through the membrane, right? And therefore, high to low, it's high concentration to low concentration. You would expect that this is called what? Diffusion. Diffusion, right? What is a term used to describe diffusion of water and water alone? Osmosis. Very good. Osmosis, right? So when you're dealing with osmosis, you're dealing with water movement. From high water to what? Low water. To low water concentration. Do you understand, right? Okay. Active transport requires movement from what? Low to high. Okay, and as you said, it requires what? ATP. ATP. Now, can you give me the prime example given in the book? What's the most common example of active transport? Sodium potassium pump. Very good, David. Sodium potassium pump. What does the pump do, David? It pumps out three sodiums and brings out two potassium. Okay, how many of sodium is pumped out, David? Three. Very good. Sodium is pumped out. Three sodium out. 
And how many potassium in? Two. Two, okay. So two potassium goes in, and how many sodium goes out? Three. And because of this, where do you find most sodium? Outside. Outside or outside? Outside. Because the pump will always pump what? From low to high, okay? How much of sodium is pumped out by the pump? Three. 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 How much of potassium is pumped into the cell? Two. Three for sodium, two for potassium. Therefore, where do you find more potassium? Inside the cell or inside the cell? Inside. Where do you find sodium more? Outside the cell or outside the cell? Outside the cell. Of course. And how would you explain that? Why is that possible? Because of what pump? Sodium, sodium potassium pump. And what exactly is this pump? Is it active transport? Oh, active. Because you're moving from low to high. From low to high for potassium going in and low to high for sodium going out. So remember that. Is it possible to interchange the two as time goes by? Yes, when we forget that we should not. After this, you have physiology. After that, you have pathophysiology. Right? Did I not tell you in order to produce this pump, you need what? ATP. And in order to produce ATP, you need what? Oxygen. oxygen. What do you think happens therefore when there's not enough blood and oxygen in the cell? Then will the pump be able to work? No. no. For example, remember your, your body has the arteries, right? The moment you have fat deposits there, what happens to the blood flow? Decreased. And if it's an artery, what kind of blood would you expect to find? Oxygen. 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 For example, the heart like this. Aorta here, coronary artery. The moment your fat deposit is there, what happens to the blood flow? Decreases. Decreased blood flow. Oxygen, what happens to the area here? Not, not yet, not yet, not yet. <laughs> almost, almost, right? It's called ischemia, right? Have you heard of the word ischemia? Yes. What caused the decreased blood flow, the fat deposit? Uh, or black, okay? And what happens to the blood flow? Decrease. That's why they have chest pain. They go to the emergency room. They're not, they're not gonna die yet. Not yet, okay? <laughs> okay? So what happens to the blood flow? There is not enough for the cells here. There is not enough blood. There is not enough oxygen. Will that affect the pump? Yes. yes. That's what happens. If there is no oxygen, will there be ATP? Without ATP, will you be able to produce movement of sodium out of the cell? No. no. And therefore, the sodium will remain where? Inside. Inside. Now, wherever sodium goes, water will? Wow. Water will? Wow. Water will? Wow. So what do you think will happen to the water? Wow. There you go. Water goes inside the cell because the sodium is inside the cell because the pump has no ATP to pump out the sodium. It's called swelling of the cell due to the influx of what? Water. Have you heard of the word hydropic? Yes. yes. Swelling. What is hydropic? Water. Hydro means what? Water. What caused the swelling of the cell? Water. This is one of the first lessons you will learn in what class? Pathophysiology. Who's going to be the teacher there? Three of us, four of us. Maybe me? You can never tell. What am I trying to drive it here is that if you know your anatomy and this diffusion and osmosis, when you come to physiology and pathophysiology, why is this pathophysiology? Because it's a pathology. People with heart disease, like me, am I at risk of developing heart disease? Yes, why? Because I have excess what? Fat. I love to eat. I love to go to Panda Express. <laughs> oh my God, the shrimp. Oh, mm. the meat. Mm. They will up into this excess fat. They will go where? In the wall of the coronary arteries of my heart. It will that affect my pump? Yes. And it will affect my muscles in my what? Myocardium. It's called myocardial ischemia. As time goes by, I do not exercise. I keep on eating and eating. Boop, 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 boop. This gets bigger and bigger and the blood flow becomes slower and decreased blood flow, you form a blood clot, and that blood clot and the fat will completely what? Okay. Block the flow of blood, no oxygen. What happens to the cells here? 
Now it's different. It's called infarction. What does infarction mean? Tissue death. That is a heart attack for the ordinary layman. It's called MI. What does MI mean? Myocardial. So what died? The myocardium. What's the word myocardium? Myo means muscle. Cardio means what? So one of these days, I look forward to the day when I suffer an MI. Because I look forward to the day when you will take care of me. Because you're smart. You come from the best school in the world and in the universe called West Coast. The best in the West. <laughs> West Coast graduates, yep, hey, okay. <laughs> Do you understand that? Now, I'm, not, I'm just joking about the one thing to die, okay? Of course not. I still have kids that I have to support, okay? <laughs> <laughs> my, two of them are still in college, so please don't stop my time yet, please. Por favor. Okay, so I hope you studied that the, the interface, prophase, metaphase, anaphase. Which one is it when the cell, the, the, the chromosome or chromatids are in the midline? Metaphase, M for midline, midline, mid equator, metaphase, right? And they start to separate, it's called what? And the phase and the form the cleavage, you know the cleavage? Yeah. Very good, okay? In order to produce your two identical daughter cells. And then of course we talked about four tissue types. We saw some of them, right? Epithelial, what else? Connective. Connective, then muscle, muscle, and then what? Neural. Neur neural tissue or nervous tissues. We talked about that, right? Muscle, there are three types, smooth, skeletal, and cardiac. cardiac. Did, were you able to see this in the lab? Yes. Very good, right? So you have smooth, found in the wall of hollow organs, such as what? Esophagus, stomach, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, and we talked about the importance of these in terms of um, bringing about movement. Like, for example, in the case of your GI tract, right? The smooth muscles there will cause you to what? What is peristalsis? Alternating wave-like contraction of the smooth muscles. Peristalsis is what? Alternating wave-like, con what can muscles contract or relax? So when the muscles contract, psh, what is found in the large intestine again? Stool. Stool. So from here, cecum, right? Ascending column, transverse column, descending column, sigmoid column. So when the muscles contract, psh, what happens to the stool? Goes up, psh, goes up, psh, to the left, psh, to the left, psh, to the down, psh, down. Splash. <laughs> What's so funny? Don't you do that every day? And you feel so good. <laughs> Thank you, smooth muscles. You made my day. Thank you, peristalsis. Define the alternative wave of the smooth muscles. Okay. You understand? So what happens when you have diarrhea? What happens to the peristalsis? Fast or slow? Fast. fast or very fast? <laughs> and what would, what would have happened to the stool? As the stool travels here, what happened to the water inside the stool? It was supposed to be absorbed. Remember the word absorption? You transfer the water or food nutrients into what? The wall. What is in the fall? Muscles. What do you find in the muscles? Blood vessels. What do you find inside the blood vessels? Blood. And what is made, blood made of? Plasma. What is plasma made of? Water in your blood, right? In other words, whatever blood you have in the stool should go, therefore, eventually into the blood, which is found in the blood vessels in the wall of your GI tract. So what happens when you have diarrhea? The paracelsis is what? Fast or very fast? Very fast. Is there enough time to absorb the water into the wall? No. The water remains where? In the stool. Let's say, what kind of stool do you have when you have diarrhea? Watery or watery? Watery. Oh, there you go. I'm so sorry. Welcome. This is uh, Dr. Yusuf Zakarni. He's here to. Uh, I'm just gonna turn it off. Yeah, we're trying to record.